welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Peter and I mainly specialize in nature photography. Today I wanted to show you guys how I set up my main camera, which is the 1DX Mark II, which I bought back in 2016 or 2017. I've been using it for over four years. I want to share with you guys how I customize that camera in terms of button layout and double back button autofocus, which I've been using for a few years now and I absolutely love it and also focus on the focus settings. Even though this particular DSLR is over five years old, I believe Canon has not changed their menu system as much. So I think you will be able to use this or the majority of these settings even on the newer mirrorless systems. I'm gonna connect my camera now by an HDMI cable to my computer and I'll be able to show you step by step all the customization I've done. We should talk about the custom controls first. If you find this little camera icon in the menu system, then uh, go in there you should have something similar pop up. The first little icon represents the shutter button. You can see it highlighted on the screen as well. Normally the shutter button has both the autofocus start and the mirroring link to it. You have to disable that and then go to the next uh, one and just select mirroring only, mirroring start. And then what I've done is I've changed the autofocus on button. We go in there and then uh, we select metering and AF start. I also use another button, the little star right next to it for both metering and AF start as well. If I hit the info for more detail, you can also customize it even further. The autofocus start position is gonna be a manually selected autofocus point. That's usually the one in the center with the Canon 100 to 400 millimeter lens that I have, the second iteration. It has a dual cross type uh, autofocus point in the center and that is the most accurate, the most efficient. So I suggest you use that. So just leave it at manually selected AF point AI servo characteristics. Just maintain current setting because I've already customized it and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in more detail in a second. AF operation again, maintain current setting and the AF area selection mode, I left it at uh, auto selection AF. So all 61 points can be used or utilized. So this is for the AF on button, but with the little star, if I go there, the little star button, there's one difference here. This is the AF area selection again. Here I'm using one point autofocus. So essentially, as I said before, I'm using a double back button autofocus with my autofocus on button all the available autofocus points can be activated or utilized. Whereas with the star button, I only have one point autofocus linked to it. This double back button autofocus system that I've been using for quite some time is gonna give you the best of both worlds. I recommend you use the auto selection AF when the background is quite homogeneous. Let's say you wanna take a picture of a bird in flight where the sky is nice and blue. All the autofocus points can be activated via the auto selection AF. Whereas with the other button where I use the manually selected one point autofocus system, it works much more efficiently. Let's say if the background is quite cluttered or you wanna make sure that you focus on the eye of the bird. New mirrorless cameras have even animal eye AF, so that makes your job much easier. So these are basically all the custom controls that I have applied when shooting birds and wildlife in general. Before I start talking about the autofocus settings in more detail, I wanted to show you guys what kind of custom shooting modes I have saved on this camera. I have three modes saved, but I tend to use mainly the C1 and C3. This is my first uh, custom shooting mode, the C1. The shutter speed is set to 3200 uh, of a second, which gives you a good starting point for birds in flight. I generally tend to shoot uh, between uh, 1600 of a second all the way up to let's say 4000th of a second. I've set the aperture to 7.1. The maximum aperture is 5.6. That's the widest at 400 millimeter on this uh, telephoto zoom lens. This usually gives you enough depth of field so you get your bird from front to back sharp enough. The ISO that I use with these exposure setting shutter speed and aperture is 500. But let's say on an overcast day, you have to bump this up sometimes to 2,500 or 3,200. With this particular camera, because the pixel pitch is rather large, so it collects quite a bit of light. You don't have to worry about uh, noise too much. So this is the C1. And then I'm gonna just switch to C2. I rarely use this C2, but this one is for birds in flight as well. The shutter speed is 2,500 of a second. 7.1 is the aperture and the ISO is bumped up to 1250. This one I normally use when the light is not as strong, there isn't as much ambient light available. And uh, this one I use normally 
I will show you a little bit later or explain it to you a little bit later. When the background is a little bit more cluttered, then I use different autofocus settings. This last one I use for static subjects, portraits in general. Here I'm using one shot autofocus instead of continuous autofocus. Now I'm going to talk about the autofocus settings in a little bit more detail with my main C1 custom uh, shooting mode. It is the following. I decided to customize the case three. I'm going to go just to detail set. So the first option gives you tracking sensitivity. What does this mean? Let's read a little bit about this in more detail. Change the autofocus response when subjects in focus move away from autofocus points in AI servo AF mode, the continuous autofocus mode. The minus value keeps the subject in focus even if they briefly exit the AF points. Ideal for continuing to track and keep a subject in focus. The lower the value, the longer the same subject is tracked, even if it leaves the autofocus point. This is why I applied minus two, the maximum setting. Let's say you start tracking a bird in flight, but all of a sudden they disappear behind branches. Then this setting will make sure that the subject stays in focus, it's locked on. So that's the tracking sensitivity. Next one is the acceleration, deceleration tracking. Let's use the information button again to learn a little bit more about this particular setting. Change the AI servo autofocus trackings response to subject acceleration, deceleration or stopping. With zero, stable focus can be achieved for subjects that do not suddenly accelerate or decelerate. Plus one and plus two are suitable for subjects that move suddenly, accelerate, decelerate or stop. The higher the value, the more closely erratic subjects are tracked. So that is why I have it set to plus two. Let's say you are trying to capture a very agile, very nimble, erratically flying bird. For me, the welcome swallow had been one of the most elusive birds to capture in flight. But luckily, a couple months ago at Karkaruk Park, I managed to get a decent in-flight shot. Finally, I'll show you the image right now. I hope you like it. So again, this particular setting will definitely help you achieve or uh, increase your chances of capturing a decent shot of erratically flying subjects. And then the third setting, the autofocus point auto switching. The autofocus point auto switching takes effect with auto selection, autofocus, large zone autofocus, zone AF and AF point expansion. Characteristics of AF point auto selection or switching can be changed in response to subjects moving in any direction. Standard setting, the zero is for moderate tracking and plus one or two, a closer tracking or responsive, even to slight changes in focus. The higher the value, the faster the AF point will be switched. That is why I have this one to plus two. Just to sum it up again, the tracking sensitivity is minus two. With this particular custom shooting mode that I have, the acceleration deceleration tracking is plus two and the autofocus point auto switching is plus two, which provides you with a very responsive system. So this has been working quite well for me for birds in flight. With the second uh, custom shooting mode, the C2 that I have, I'm gonna show you what kind of autofocus settings I have here. And this one I tend to use when the background is very cluttered and it's much harder for the camera to detect the subject. My tracking sensitivity is set to fully responsive, plus two on the responsive side. So the exact opposite than in the C1 custom shooting mode that I have. This one works really well when you have, let's say, a flock of birds in your viewfinder and you want to focus on the birds closer to you, or when the background is really cluttered or the bird is flying in between branches. This is going to give you the most optimal results. So we'll make sure that the responsiveness is set to uh, plus two. The higher the value, the faster the focus is acquired on a new subject. The acceleration deceleration tracking is the exact same. With this particular custom shooting mode, I have the AF point auto switching set to zero, which is very good for moderate tracking. It works in conjunction with the other custom settings, the most optimally, I believe. This is my last custom shooting mode, the C3. I use single shooting and the single autofocus point. This is very good for static subjects. If I hit the AF on button, I'm currently just focusing on the flip out screen of my Canon ATD that I'm currently recording myself with. You can see that the focus is acquired and then I can just take the shot. That's the image that we got. So if I zoom in, there we go. There are a couple of other settings that I wanted to talk about briefly. 
in most instances spot metering is generally recommended for wildlife and bird photography for birds in flight charts i tend to rely on evaluative metering though this one is quite handy if the lighting conditions change abruptly this one is going to give you the best possible feedback so these are the most important settings that i want to talk about but let's delve a little bit more into more settings here the ai servo first image priority i set it to just release priority which means after the shutter button is pressed the picture is taken immediately even if the subject is not in focus and then the ai servo second image priority is set to just uh, equal priority ensures the balance between focus and continuous shooting speed continuous shooting may be slower in dark or low contrast conditions in this next menu option under the lens electronic manual focus I have got the one shot AF enabled. This one takes effect with lenses that have electronic uh, focus rings. The enable after one shot AF means that manual focusing is still possible after autofocus is completed by keeping the shutter button half pressed. I don't need that because I have back button autofocus anyway. The AF assist beam firing is on. This one just helps you achieve focus when an external flash is connected in low light conditions. One shot AF release priority, it's set to focus priority. This focus priority is used with the one shot that I've got set for the C3 custom shooting mode. This focus priority means that no shot will be taken until the subject is in focus. If I hold the AF on button down, but the focus is not acquired, then even if I keep pressing the shutter button, it won't start taking the pictures. All right, and then the next one, autofocus point selection. This one is face priority criteria for EOS ITR AF auto subject selection takes effect with auto selection AF, large zone AF and zone AF. I have got the face priority uh, switched on. AF point auto selection and subject tracking is based on AF information, subject distance, color information, face information, etc. So this is what I use. This is the most accurate, I believe. Lens drive when AF impossible is on. What does this mean? Continue focus search. When focus could not be achieved, the lens drive keeps operating to find the focus position. And then selectable autofocus points. I've got all of them enabled. Select AF area selection mode. I've got uh, all of them enabled here. AF area selection. I'm using the main dial. The orientation link, the AF point is set to same for both vertical and horizontal. And then the initial autofocus point is set to manual. There is only one more sub menu here. The autofocus point selection movement is set to continuous. This means that instead of stopping at the edge, autofocus point selection continues to the opposite edge. So if the bird is flying all over the place and it loses focus, then it's gonna keep searching for the subject. Autofocus point display during focus is set to selected autofocus point. Autofocus point brightness is just normal. Autofocus status in the viewfinder is showing field of view and the autofocus micro adjustment is just set to off. I haven't done any micro adjustments to any of my lenses. So these are all the settings that I wanted to talk about. If you wanna take your wildlife or let's say birds in flight photography to a whole new level, then I can highly recommend you customize. Certain settings might not work for you, so maybe experiment with it a little bit and then see what kind of results you get. But for me, these have been the most optimal settings for sure. I think I've covered everything that I wanted. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to get in touch with me or if you need any help, I'd be happy to help you out or give you some pieces of advice if I can. Stay for a little longer if you want to see my best in-flight shots of birds. Thank you so much again for watching and see you guys very soon in the next one.